Hey everyone, welcome back to Automation. So after the success of my previous video where I managed to make a car that has ridiculously soft suspension, I figured today, based on some comments I was seeing on that video, that we're gonna do the exact opposite. I'm gonna take this same truck that I had before and make it with the hardest suspension possible. So hopefully it'll be like it has no suspension at all. So we won't be spending too much time in automation. It's going to be mostly BeamNG because the reality is it's not very difficult to just kind of <laughs> change the name, change this to be JEP2, and then go to the suspension tab and turn everything all the way up. I am going to change the color, uh, mostly just so that they're easy to differentiate, but other than that, it's, uh, it's going to be exactly the same for the sake of fairness. So the hard rotor is going to be red, and the other one is the same blue that you saw before. Now if you remember from last time, all of these are as low as they can go, and that basically just meant that the suspension was extremely soft. But today, I'm going to stick with the same ride height, and I'm just going to turn this stuff all the way up, uh, and we'll see what happens in BeamNG. So it's gone from 0.4 to 10, uh, which should theoretically mean that the front suspension, at least what I've changed so far, will hardly be able to compress. At least that's the idea. I've gone ahead and done the same thing to the rear dampers. So you can see here that is all the way up as well. The ride frequency, as you can see, is pretty ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> I think it's going to make for a very interesting ride, though. What I want to do mostly is take this into an off-road park and its soft cousin as well. And we'll see which one does better with the different combinations of airing up and down the tires. But I figure that the soft one is just going to be good overall. I kind of want to see what you can do with no suspension. Okay, so that does it. That means the uh, stuff is as hard as it can be. That's harder than the race preset. And let's export it into BeamNG Drive and see how it goes. So that was a different transition. Uh, this is the soft rotor, uh, which is now just going to be called soft. Um, again, at the same ride height, and uh, basically the only difference is that the suspension is set to be extremely soft. And you can see that based on the way it bounces and wallows and it has problems. I saw some of the comments suggesting I mess with the sway bars as well to give it uh, a roll on the, the side and not just front and back, but I mean that's a that's a video for another day. The softest sway bars possible might be another challenge, but this, this is what we started with last week, and now let's see where we've ended up. Hardest suspension possible, take one. Okay, it's fairly firm. It's definitely different than it was. Uh, you know what? It's not even that firm. Like, it's it's definitely more firm than the softest, but it's not as dramatic. I was kind of thinking it would be just as if there's nothing there. Like, just completely firm suspension, no movement at all. But you can see that there is at least a little bit of wiggle room in the, uh, <laughs> in the wheel wells there. Now, one of the ways that we can make this even more firm is by going to the tuning settings in BeamNG's own editor and trying to make it even harder. So let's try that. Just going up here to vehicle config and tuning. So we don't have anything to do with the uh, suspension up here, but there are some advanced settings I might be able to tweak. We'll see about that. First thing I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna turn the tire pressure up to 45. So let's see what it's like with the firmest tires that you can get. Uh, because automation starts you off at a pretty low 22 something uh, PSI in your tires, which is pretty much under every manufacturer's spec unless you're off-road. Uh, but 45 is pretty high. Usually cars are around 30 something, 32, 35, somewhere in there. This is not as firm <laughs> as I thought it was going to be. You know, I might have been completely wrong about this soft one over there being better off-road, but there is really only one way to test it. So let's go to an off-road park, we'll test the both of them, and we'll see which one I like the best. And which one you like the best too. Obviously you can comment about that below. So this is the exact same spot that I tested the soft order out in the previous video. It's the Hirochi Raceway rock crawling course. It is a pretty darn tough course, and I was barely able to scrape by 
using our soft rotor vehicle, but with something that has extremely firm suspension, I'm wondering if it can do the same sort of thing. Like the other one was able to soak up bumps quite well. It had no problems at all. Uh, this is with the tire pressure back down to where it was. So I'm actually just gonna quickly go and turn it all the way back up again in the, in the name of making things more difficult for myself because lower tire pressure off-road is generally favorable. Right, we're back to 45 PSI. I'm back to wondering if this was a good idea. Let's take this off-road course uh, for a bit of a spin. Now, this being a lot softer than I thought it was going to be, I kind of anticipate that uh, it's not going to be too bad. Although, that being said, I'm immediately stuck. <laughs> I'm just going to go into low range. We should be able to get through this. I'm not amazing off-road. <laughs> I'm definitely more of a... Uh, actually, I'm not a good driver in general. But when you lock the diffs and you got it in low range, it's pretty hard to stop anything in BeamNG, except if you don't have enough ground clearance. But, yeah, no problem here. Attempting to do basically the exact same course is uh, seemingly not going to be a problem. <laughs> However, I do have an area, I think, where this is possibly going to struggle a little bit. Because the suspension is significantly firmer, it is very bouncy. And... I mean, we thought that the other soft rotor was a lot bouncier than it should be, but the reality is that its suspension takes every bump for it. With this one, the suspension transfers all of the force from every bump right into the body and basically makes us spring up if we hit something too hard. At least that's what I'm noticing so far, and that makes sense. Like, there's a reason why off-roaders tend to have fairly soft suspension. Like if it was a Baja race or something, they basically need to soak up every bump they hit. Otherwise, the truck or vehicle is going to rattle like crazy and then most likely fly off the track at some point. Although they happen to do that a lot anyways. So in the slow areas like this, it's probably not making that much of a difference. However, when we get into some high speed stuff, I think it will. That's my theory. The pipes are proving to be difficult only because I suck. <laughs> I gotta get it lined up on both of them. I am in low range, double lock diffs, and four wheel drive, so uh, I'm giving myself every advantage that I can here. Oh, that's bouncy. That's really bouncy. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there's, there's the differentiating factor right there. But you know, firmest suspension possible, basically harder than an off-road preset, or a, a race preset actually in this game. Uh, not as bad as I thought. Keeping in mind, of course, that this is with 45 PSI in the tires, too. <laughs> I'm not making this easy for myself. You know, I was just thinking, if we were to directly compare this to the soft one in a road course, that might be very interesting. Um, I'm going to try to find a mixed pavement and dirt course. I'm going to run them both with both of these trucks multiple times, and we'll see which one is faster. <laughs> just for fun. Yeah, by the way, I'm, I'm kind of kind of boned here <laughs> come on get out of there so i've picked a short street stage for us to run on just because i'm interested to see how it goes this is a pretty ridiculous subaru here that i'm going to use to set a baseline time having not run this track ever before i don't think it's going to be particularly good but i'll do a couple runs with the other trucks and we'll see where i end up also before the end of this video i'm going to put a trailer on the back of that thing do not worry we're getting to that all right, let's take off and see what's in store for us. This thing is an auto, apparently. I don't, uh, well, I, I didn't pick it specifically. Now, <laughs> let's just run through this and see how it goes. So keep in mind that the Jeeps are going to be working with the exact same specs. Also, keep in mind that I suck. Okay, so it does transition to dirt a little bit further on, and it seems to be fairly smooth, which is good. I think this is going to be a good stage for me. Uh, the Jeeps are not anywhere near as fast as this thing is, uh, which is a good thing because <laughs> it's easy to lose confidence when the trees are so close to the road. I feel like I'm playing Dirt Rally here. Big jumps too. Oh, this is going to be a good one. Actually, this is going to be a, a very good one for this. Keep in mind that the Jeeps are going to be running with the exact same engine specs, exact same tire specs. The only difference is, again, the suspension. So we'll see how much difference that makes on a relatively bumpy, but also not too bad, off-road course. All right, nearing the finish line, I'll admit that it has been a few attempts. This course is very narrow and difficult, but that is 1 minute 30 seconds, and that'll be our baseline time. All right, I'm going to start things off with the hard rotor, just because... 
uh, it's basically the easiest one to drive, <laughs> at least what I'm thinking. So we do have manual this time. I'm going to stay with ESC. Actually, I'm going to do this. This, this will just be our warm up lap. But I'm going to go ESC in sport mode just so we have a little bit of wiggle room in terms of the traction. And obviously I'm going to be shifting this myself, uh, which is probably not going to turn out that well. We're a little bit slower off the line than the Subaru. Keep in mind that this thing has a inline four-cylinder. Uh, it makes 220 horsepower and it is turbocharged, but that's pretty much the only good thing going for it. Oh, and the brakes are real bad. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is going to be rough. Turning into the off-road section, doing so quite leisurely, honestly. Uh, still, keep in mind this is with the firmest suspension that we can get. I'm anticipating that we get bumped off the track at some point, but you never really know. This is probably going to be a two minute lap because, uh, well, <laughs> or a two minute run I should say. This course cannot do laps. Sticking it out in third gear over the bump, pretty soft on the landing, actually not bad at all. Yeah, third gear and second gear in this corner here seem to be pretty happy with this vehicle. It is definitely not geared to run these kind of courses. I am in four-wheel drive, so I'm getting the most traction I can get, but, I mean, there's only so much you can do with a vehicle this big and an engine this small. Overall, fairly smooth run, though. We're not even close to finish the track. <laughs> I think that the next one, uh, after I do another couple rounds with this, is, is going to be the worst of the worst. <laughs> Soft suspension, racing, not ideal. Oh man, we're struggling with torque on the low end. We need more cylinders or more displacement, I guess. But this is going to be a 146. Not bad. All right, let me give it another couple tries. All right, I was able to knock three seconds off on my second run. Not bad. I'm going to do it one more time, and then we'll get to the jelly boy. Every single time I get faster. That's a 140, but let's try out the jelly car and see how it goes. So I'm noticing an immediate difference with this one, and that is when you spawn it in, the thing wiggles like crazy, which is always a good sign. So when we get hard on the brakes, it's going to fly forwards, and when we get hard on the acceleration, it is going to fly upwards. <laughs> so let's see how this is going to go. Obviously, first we'll get into sport mode, rev her on up, drop it into first, and not the most amazing start. Basically, having super soft suspension means that we're soaking up a lot of our acceleration uh, just by the movement of the front going up and the back going down. <laughs> I think brake time is going to be a bit of a problem. I did discover last time which gears are best for each corner and that that corner can very easily be cut, so I plan on doing that every time. So far, we're wiggling around uh, a little bit. It's a little bit jarring, actually, compared to the last experience. I wonder, yeah, the time is probably going to be really similar. That, The difference, I know this is a bit of a problem, oh my goodness, but the difference is not going to be that much in the hands of me as the driver, unless I do that. Okay, a little bit better that time. It's soaking up the bumps, that's for sure, but the body is flailing all over the place, which is not very confidence-inspiring, basically. Uh, anytime we go over a rough patch, this thing just wobbles like nuts. So let's just see it around some of these final few corners here. It's, uh, yeah, there, there is a corner up this way that is going to be difficult, I think. Uh, this one here specifically coming up. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's rough. Oh, goodness. Down into second gear. Fly through this as fast as I can. Come on. Floor it. Well, I've been basically flooring it the whole time up into third and the finish line is dead ahead this isn't gonna be bad for a first run not bad at all come on 144 <laughs> actually not terrible I'm uh, I'm surprised I got a little bit more work to do to get to that 140 but let's give it two more runs and see how it goes I have discovered a bit of a flaw with this sort of setup and that is it has a really hard time getting settled when you try and take a corner that has bumps on it it takes a while to get the thing level again, which is probably its biggest problem. Soaking up the bumps is all good, going off jumps and really not feeling it is all good, but part of the problem is the small stuff. <laughs> We're flying around some of these corners, but it just isn't controlled. <laughs> I'm just having a hard time, basically. So, at the end of the day, what are we learning? Uh, nothing, really. Nothing new, at least. Soft suspension, maybe not the best. At least not for this type of 
uh, instance. <laughs> In that case, I did four seconds worse. Oof. I'm going to try one more time, and if I can't beat that 140, then that's it. And we're bouncing our way across the line. Oh, 143. Oh, it would have been even better, but it definitely wouldn't have been a 140. So, that's that, I guess. <laughs> We've determined that hard suspension is better, at least in a race. Oh no, my trailer's running away. Come back, sir trailer. It is not your time to go yet. Let's load this thing up and just kind of see how the suspension loads something that's fairly heavy. You remember the last one basically did exactly the same thing it does when it accelerates, meaning that the uh, front end went all the way up, but in this case, it doesn't even budge. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. But yeah, I kind of expected this one to have no problems with the trailer at all. Uh, driving in this very lovely scenery, just a few bumps, nothing too crazy. It's definitely going to be fine. So everybody, uh, <laughs> what did we learn today? Not uh, not particularly much. I think that this was a bit of a failed experiment in a lot of ways because the soft suspension in Onmation is like extremely soft, but the hard suspension, it's not as hard as it should be. My air conditioning just came on, so it's a good time to say goodbye. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Check out some of the other ones on my channel if you enjoyed this. I definitely have some more stuff you'll like if you're into suspension and weird sort of ideas. I have a lot of weird ideas. <laughs> there are no shortage of weird ideas on this channel. Shout out to Nyaners for the uh, BeamNG intro. I appreciate that. <laughs> And also, uh, be sure to check out my website if you want to support the channel. I have stickers there that I sell to the entire world if you're interested. They're five bucks shipping all over the place. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll see you guys again soon. Check this out, boys. This is my new house. Oh, yes. Hold on a minute. Let me just crash into it for posterity. Ah, it's claimed. I just want to take a millisecond or six to thank those who have chosen to support this channel, specifically the join button members. Uh, we have Overlord, QT Bear, Terry01, J Pope, Davis Heister, The German Dude, uh, Nat64, Synlab, Goofy Plays, Badger, Phoenix Shark, and Baja Blast. Thank you everybody for your support. Also, if you haven't noticed in recent, uh, basically the last week, the channel has grown exponentially. We've gained like over a thousand subscribers, so. Things are going great, guys. It, it's been a bit of a lull last year and earlier this year, but I really feel like the channel's back and I'm super excited for it. So, yeah, <laughs> thanks for your support. I'll see you again soon.